This girl was brought up by a robot and never met another human. But as she reaches teenage, she finally visits the Earth only to find out that it is invaded by deadly aliens. Eva never saw her parents and opened her eyes in an isolated nursery. From there, she was picked up by a robot called Mother. She's a multi-utility task helper programmed to look after the baby. Mother provided Eva with all the necessities and looked after her like a real mom. As Eva grows up, Mother starts teaching her basic words and communication skills. After learning the words family and mama, Eva assumes Mother as family, but the robot clearly says that she's just here to look after her for a specific period of time. Besides family, Eva also desires to have friends, so Mother gives her a teddy bear named Migo. Eva loves Migo and plays with it all day. She loves exploring new rooms and doors, but there's one gate Eva never opened. A giant round door secured with a password. To distract Eva from the door, Muther teaches her how to ride a bike and count her laps. On her sixth birthday, Muther gives Eva a special device called an Omnipod. It is programmed to answer all questions and provide necessary assistance. However, the Omnipod can't open the round door either. Seeing Eva's curiosity, Muther decides to introduce her to someone special. She takes the little girl to a special chamber and begins welcoming instructions. The chamber turns into a beautiful simulation of Earth, and Eva meets another human for the first time. Unfortunately, it's just a hologram, but Eva still feels excited. The hologram is used by Cadmus Pride to share a special message with Eva. Cadmus is the creator of the place where Eva is brought up. The Earth was really polluted so Cadmus built underground sanctuaries to bring up the next generation. Fortunately, the Earth has finally recovered, and the sanctuary kids are sent to the surface. If Eva wants to join them, she needs to learn a lot of things and prepare herself for the new habitat. To make it interesting, Eva's guide will be her teddy bear Migo. He will teach her everything from agriculture to technology. Once Eva learns everything, she needs to give a final assessment and must pass to get through a round door that leads to the surface. After learning this, Eva can't stop thinking about how life is going to be on the surface and what games she's going to play with her friends. She's also worried about the test, but Mother asks her to rest and focus on her training. Soon she will be able to meet a group of humans whom she can call a family. From the next day, Eva starts her training and gets all the education one may receive in actual school. She also learns gardening and survival skills to tackle every type of circumstances in her upcoming life. Finally, after 10 years, Eva gets fully prepared for the test. She celebrates her 16th birthday with Mother and spends the night practicing her introduction. She doesn't want to embarrass herself in front of other humans. Eva asks Omnipod about the test details and he mentions that she can only give the test once a year. Eva gets frustrated and hits the wall but it creates a weird sound. Omnipod can't explain the sound because the wall leads to a restricted area. Eva gets curious and drags away the furniture to forcefully unlock the wall. It leads her to a living room where she finds several chairs tagged with names including her as well. Eva gets really excited to know about other kids and she starts looking for them. She checks other rooms and finds a half-open exit door. There's also an invitation letter for Eva with the word Wandla. Suddenly she notices a light on the other side of the door and tries to get their attention. A monster lands near the door and shoots at Eva. She gets scared and runs out of the restricted area. She closes the wall but the monster breaks through it. Muther grabs Eva's hand and starts running towards safety. All the security protocols are active but the alien keeps following Eva. Muther opens the exit door but it gets blocked so she takes Eva towards the kitchen vent. It will lead her to the surface and she can meet the other kids. At least six kids were brought up in each sanctuary and only Eva grew up alone. Eva gets worried for Mother, but the robot says that her responsibility is to prioritize Eva's safety. Eva climbs up the vent and reaches the surface but it's nothing like she imagined. It seems like a dark place invaded by monsters who clearly hate humans. Eva gets spotted again so she runs to save her life. She eventually reaches a cliff but as she turns back her feet slip and she falls down. The next morning, Eva opens her eyes while lying down on a giant plant. Suddenly the plant starts walking so Eva jumps down. She asks Omnipod for help but it doesn't have any information regarding the weird plants. Moreover, there are flying whales in the sky and giant flesh eating butterflies. Eva tries to locate other sanctuaries but none of them seems to be online. There's also no signal from her own sanctuary and mother. The alien must have destroyed everything. Eva tries to stay strong and recalls her survival training. First of all, she needs to check her supplies. Luckily, Mother provided her with enough preserved food for weeks. Eva continues looking for other kids and notices a human-like figure. She starts greeting in every language she knows but doesn't get an answer. 
Suddenly, a giant plant grabs her feet and traps her inside its mouth. She screams for help and someone arrives to cut down the plant. It's not a human, but an alien. Fortunately, he's not interested in killing Eva and just steals her stuff. Eva keeps following him and tries to communicate, but the alien only says one word, Sheena. Eva assumes that it's a name and starts calling him Sheena. Suddenly, the monsters come back and kidnap Eva and Sheena. He ties them up and gets busy cooking his food. Eva has been trained in survival simulation and she knows how to escape this situation. She uses a laser gun to free herself, but the gun falls down in a hole. To help Sheena, Eva steals the monster's dagger. She suddenly notices an innocent alien trapped nearby so she frees him too. The monster starts following the alien and Eva gets a chance to help Sheena. She also finds Mother but she seems to be out of order. The alien comes back after a while and helps Eva and Sheena run away. After reaching a safe spot, Eva thanks the alien but gets shocked to realize that she can hear the alien's thoughts and communicate with them. The alien introduces himself as Otto and becomes Eva's friend. Eva thanks Otto for the help and she gets busy fixing Mother. Sheena suddenly offers her a piece of gum, but it's actually a special gum that develops Eva's power to understand Sheena's language. His actual name is Rovender Kit, and he's not interested in staying with Eva anymore. Eva notices the human dynasty patch on his clothes and begs Rovender to take her to the trade market where he bought the patch. In exchange, she's willing to give away her Omnipod. Meanwhile, Mother finally recovers and tries to look for other kids. Eva asks about the five other kids in her batch, but Mother says Eva was the only survivor of this generation. Before her, Mother brought up eight generations, but each one had at least six kids. During Eva's turn, the sanctuary suffered from contamination and security shut down everything. Miraculously, one baby pod was working, and it was Eva. Muther wants to go back to the sanctuary for safety, but Eva chooses to visit the trade market in Lacus. Moreover, she believes that they aren't on Earth but some kind of alien planet. Muther still thinks it's Earth but what happened to it and the humans living on it. Eva asks Muther to calm down and follow her plan. They will travel to Lucas and find other humans to start a new society. On their way, Eva keeps touching the colorful plants so Rovender strictly warns her of the danger. These plants may look beautiful but they can be poisonous, or even eat humans alive. After traveling a few miles, Eva hears someone calling for help. It's a creature called a Sand Sniper. Rovender advises not to get near it, but Eva can't stop herself from helping the Sand Sniper. As she gets near it, the monster ship takes away the Sand Sniper. Luckily, Eva and her friends are safe. They finally reach Lucas which is a beautiful city of peaceful aliens. Rovender gives some clothes to Eva and Muther so they can easily blend in. Afterward, they travel to Karunkel's Antique to get information about the Dynasty Patch. Karkunkel agrees to tell its origin, but he demands a huge payment. To earn some money, Rovender takes Eva to bet on a spiderfish race. Eva doesn't like gambling, but she has no other chance. She doesn't have money for the entrance fee, so she bets on Mother. If Eva loses, Mother will be taken away. Eva is confident of her victory because she knows the secret to winning. Eva chooses a nervous and blind spiderfish and encourages her with a motivational speech. Afterward, she talks to it in her mind and guides the fish towards the target. Everyone is left in shock on seeing a blind fish win. Meanwhile, Eva takes away the victory prize. As Karunkel's shop is closed now, Eva needs to wait till the morning. Rovender takes them to his sister's house, and her family gladly welcomes Eva despite knowing she's a human. Especially, the kids are really excited to meet Eva and want to ask a lot of questions. Eva joins them on the dining table and enjoys the alien food. Afterward, she hangs out with the kids as they are really eager to know more about humans. Rovender leaves after the dinner because he never spends the night at someone else's house. Her sister tells Eva that Rovender has always been a sad introvert since he lost both his job and his family. However, he seems more talkative around Eva. Hearing his sad story, Eva forgives his rude behavior and decides to treat him better. Later that night, the kids tell her about a female alien who knows a lot about humans. Her name was Darius, who once served as a royal poet, but now she tells stories to her visitors. Eva decides to look for Darius, and she sneaks out in the middle of night. She gets surprised to see that Darius is a creepy six-handed alien. She claims to have all the answers, but in exchange Eva has to give away her precious memories. Darius keeps others' joyful memories in different jars and uses them to stay happy. She gives an empty jar to Eva and asks her to think about her most happy moment of life. It turns out to be Eva's sixth birthday when she was really excited to know more about humans. Once Eva hands over her memory, the alien shares her own story. This planet is now called Orbona, 
and she reached here with her brother and sisters. However, after reaching here, the alien only witnessed pain and deaths because the humans were after them. They destroyed everything and got buried with it. The alien asks Eva to ask her a question, but as she mentions the kids living in sanctuaries, Darius gets angry. She didn't know humans are still alive. She calls Eva a monster and kicks her out. Eva falls down in the lake, but luckily, Otto saves her and carries her to the shore. Eva gets really sad after being called a monster by Darius. She starts wondering what if she's the only one left. Suddenly, she notices Rovender and remembers about the dynasty patch. It's already sunrise, so they can visit the Karunkle shop. Eva rushes to Rovender, but he is totally drunk. He has spent half of the prize money on drinks, which makes Eva really angry. She needs his help, but Rovender doesn't want to be involved in her risky adventures anymore. Eva mentions his family, which makes Rovender more frustrated, and he walks away. Eva goes to Karunkle's shop alone and requests him to give the information at half the price. In exchange, Eva will tell him the real purpose of all human inventions Karunkle is keeping in his shop. After knowing that Eva is a human, Karunkle gets really surprised. He always wanted to meet a real human and clear all the queries he had. He finally tells Eva that he got the dynasty patch from Solus, the capital of Orbona. There lives a person called Zin, who has the largest collection of human dynasties. He also has an Omnipod. Eva gets really excited because the Omnipod must have the contact information of its owner. The only way to reach Solace is getting caught by the monster following Eva. His name is Bastille, and he helps Zin in building his collection. He will definitely take Eva to Zin, and from there, she needs to escape by herself after getting the Omnipod. Eva doesn't trust Karunkle, so she asks Mother to accompany her to Solace. Mother believes it's too risky, so she advises Eva to stay in this city for a few days. Eva is getting impatient and wants to leave right now. This makes Muther angry because Eva is being really selfish and disobedient lately. Muther's responsibility is not to keep Eva safe, but Eva refuses to follow her orders because Muther can never be her real mom. Saying these insensitive words, Eva leaves the house and goes to meet Bastille by herself. Poor Muther keeps calling her back, but Eva doesn't listen. She voluntarily gets in the pod and flies away with Bastille. After reaching Solace, Eva is taken to the palace and presented before Queen Oho and her advisors Lorak and Zin. They have weird concepts about the human race, and advise the queen to stay away from Eva because she may eat her brain. Eva tries to explain that she's not a monster, and only wants the Omnipod Zin has. No one listens to him, and Zin asks the giant guards to take Eva to the lab. He loves to study endangered species like her. Eva is willing to tell everything about her race, but Zin prefers to do it by himself by dissecting her. Eva can't let that happen and attacks Zin. He is really scared of humans and starts to panic. Eva takes this chance to escape, but the guards are still following her. She notices Queen Oho and threatens to eat her brain if she doesn't help her. The queen gets scared and sends away the guards. Eva shows her the Omnipod and asks the queen if she has seen one. Queen Oho's late father had a huge collection of human artifacts, so it may have the Omnipod too. The queen takes her to a special place where each human artifact is safely kept in a special box. Eva opens one box after another but doesn't find the Omnipod. Suddenly a guard reaches there and Eva gets scared, but the queen introduces the guard as Chip, the only guard loyal to the king. Unlike other guards, Chip only follows the queen's orders. He helps in getting the bigger boxes, and one of them contains a game machine. Eva develops interest and starts playing the game. She teaches it to the queen as well, and they play together like friends. Eva clears the misunderstandings about humans and calls herself harmless. The queen starts trusting her and becomes her friend. Just like Eva, Queen Oho never had a friend before. She always stayed busy in training because Zorok called her unworthy of a queen. She still doesn't have the confidence of ruling by herself and depends on the advisors. But her father was different. He had chosen this planet for them and never listened to the advisors. He was fascinated by humans and called them kind and intelligent. Now Oho has realized that her father was right. After playing a few games, Eva finds a box with a special car. It's made with the combination of human and alien technology. While Eva is exploring the car, the advisors reach there and scold the queen for helping a traitor. Zin ties Eva down and prepares to dissect her. Eva notices the sand sniper and asks it to play dead. Zin goes to check on her and Eva takes this chance to escape the lab. The queen brings the car and asks Eva to get in. They drive around the palace but eventually get caught by the advisors. They want to kill Eva but the queen gets in the way. She's not stepping back anymore. 
She's the rightful owner of the throne and the ruler of Orbona. She orders Zin to give the Omnipod to Eva so she can use it to find other humans. The queen also gives her the car so Eva can travel easily. Eva takes her leave and promises to meet the queen again one day. Right now, she has to go back to Muther and find the other humans.